I want to read your book. Um, and then, does anyone actually have any questions? Do you want to do that? Does anyone have questions? No. Okay, so we'll do that in a minute, eh? Maybe we'll do a couple of questions. Are we going to have 20 minutes worth of questions, or? You tell me. Nah, you're just tired. I want to read you this book for two reasons. One, because... When I asked God about this festival and I said, God, what do you want to say to your people? Like, where are we at? I saw this ginormous tornado and in it was all this theology and all this church culture that was just twisting around and round and round. And God said, you're just all twisted up. Just all twisted. It's so much more simple than what color the curtains are. You know, whether you use this language or that language, whether your pastor wears skinny jeans or, you know, 90s baggy stuff from Backstreet Boys. It's so much more than whether your music is charismatic or not, whether you play Hillsong or Bethel. Actually, that's all just irrelevant. In the scheme of things, that's the trash in the can. The good household goods is God. And actually, He's the most neglected thing most of the time in our lives. We're too busy vacuuming the floor rather than saying, hey God, let's hang out. Not because I'm afraid of you, but because I see value in you far beyond anything around me. And I read this book today to my son in bed, and uh, I cried like a baby the whole way through, um, in the most manly way possible. And I wanted to read it to you because I think if we can grasp this in art, then you can walk out of here with everything you need to change the world, regardless if anybody knows your name or not. So imagine this tiny, has anyone heard this book before, You Are Special, by Max Licato? Oh, look at that. Imagine this village, right? Everybody's made of wood. And uh, some people are just made more beautiful or more clever than others. But everyone's made of wood. And in this world, instead of just throwing words, people throw physical things at those that they like and they dislike. And there's this little guy called Punchinello who enters the scene. and. That's where we're going to start it. So I'll read you this book. They're called Wemex. The Wemex were small wooden people carved by a woodcarver called Eli. Each Wemex was different. Some had big noses, others had large eyes. Some were tall and others were short. Each Wemex had a box of golden star stickers and grey dot stickers. The wooden people went around the village sticking stars to dots on one another, stars and dots on one another. The pretty ones got stars. The Wemex with rough wood or chipped paint got dots. The talented ones got stars too. Some could jump over tall boxes or sing pretty songs. Others though could do little and they got dots. Punchinello was one of these. He tried to jump high like others but he always fell. So the Wemex would give him dots. When he tried to explain why he fell, they would say something silly, so the Wemex would give him more dots. He deserves lots of dots, the wooden people would say. After a while, Punchinello believed them. I guess I'm not a good Wemex, he, he decided. So he stayed inside most of the time. When he did go outside, he hung around other Wemex who had lots of dots, because he felt better around them. One day he met a different kind of Wemex, Wemex named Lucia. She had no dots and she had no stars. The Wemex admired Lucia for having no dots, so they would give her a star, but it would fall off. Others gave her a dot for having no stars, but it wouldn't stay either. That's the way I want to be, thought Punchinello. So he asked Lucia how she did it. It's easy, she replied. Every day I go to visit Eli, the woodcarver. Why? You'll find out if you see him, she said. But will he want to see me, Punchinello wondered. Later at home, he sat and watched the wooden people giving each other stars and dots. And it's not right, he muttered to himself. And he decided to go and see Eli. Punchinello walked up the narrow path and stepped into Eli's shop. His eyes grew big. The stool was tall as he was. He had to stretch on tiptoe to see the top of the workbench. Punchinello swallowed hard. I'm not staying here. Then he left, then he heard his name. Punchinello? The voice was deep and strong. How good to see you. Come, let me have a look at you. Punchinello looked up. You know my name? Of course I do, I made you. 
Eli picked him up and set him on his bench. Looks like you've been given some bad marks, said the maker. I didn't mean to, Eli. I tried really hard. Punchinello, I don't care what the other Wemmicks think. You don't? No, and you shouldn't either. What they think doesn't matter. All that matters is what I think, and I think you're pretty special. Punchinello laughed. Me? Special? Why? I'm not very talented and my paint is peeling, so why do I matter to you? Eli spoke very slowly. Because you're mine. That's why you matter to me. Punchinello didn't know what to say. Every day I've been hoping you'd come, Eli explained. I came because I met Lucia, said Punchinello. Why don't the stickers stay on her? The maker spoke softly because she decided that what I think is more important than what others think. The stickers only stick if you let them. What? The stickers only stick if they matter to you. The more you trust my love, the less you care about their stickers. I'm not sure I understand, Eli smiled. You will, but it will take time. For now, come to see me every day and let me remind you of how much I care. Eli lifted Punchinello off the bench seat, set him on the ground. Remember, Eli said as Punchinello was leaving, you're special because I made you and I don't make mistakes. Punchinello didn't stop, but in his heart he thought, I think he really means it. And when he did, the dot fell to the ground. It's okay. What if God really loved people and they were out there and they just needed someone to tell them? What if they just needed a Lucia? Someone who just didn't let the crap stick and that person entered their living room or their house or their stereo and they could hear God say to them, I've been waiting every day for you to come home. Because it's great for us, we get to come here and enjoy this, right? But I'm willing to bet that at least half of you feel like God would never say that to you. That He's not waiting every day for you to come and see Him again so that you can know not all the crap that you've done wrong in your life, but just that He loves you and that He created you good. There is no art on the face of the earth more powerful than an art that can show someone that God loves them. That can tell them the good news. But we're so fixated on the chord structures and the album covers and all this crap, man. It drives me crazy. And then we start out with these good intentions and people start giving us stars and then the stars just stick. And then we go to Punchinello and we try and tell him something and he says, you've got no idea what it feels like. You've got stars all over you and I've got grey dots all over me. You know nothing. Because we're just so full of the good things that we get when we do something right. But imagine a whole body of people of artists who never let the stars stick or the great dots stick. We're not too prideful because we're doing great stuff, but we're not low because we feel like we're not loved. And we put that in a painting. We put that in a piece of architecture. We put that in as a father, as a mother, as a brother, as a sister. That's the power of what we have at our fingertips every day. It was enough for Jesus, the Word of God, to come and die for us taking on the appearance of man, looking like nothing. Has it ever struck you that Jesus was so ordinary that if he sat in here today, you wouldn't even know he was God? And we go to church meetings, we want to see people falling over, shaking and baking, we want to see gold dust and diamonds and all that kind of stuff, and that's awesome. I love that. Like, God bless miracles, man. But Jesus was so incredibly humble. He was a piece of art that people looked at and said, that's nothing. That's not even a good-looking man. That can't be God. And we get so caught up on all the wrong stuff, you know? Man, I'm crying again. I'm really sorry. That book killed me. <laughs> we can be that, guys. We can be that. And it doesn't take the skill that you don't have. It takes looking inward and going, I'm loved. I just got to share that love. And that kind of creativity, that kind of following the wind is irrelevant whether you're a musician a school teacher, a, a plumber, or you just don't even have a job. That kind of creativity is the creativity that God demonstrated to us in Jesus Christ. And that, by the way, that man who looked like nothing, that man of sorrows who no one considered to be God, 
How could all of heaven and all of this be contained in one man who didn't even look that abnormal? And he changed history. Countries have lived and died in Jesus Christ. Wars have been fought. Souls have been saved. The dead have been raised because of this man who looked like nothing. So maybe our art has less to do with the beauty that we attribute to it and more to do with the beauty that's in us, the Spirit of God. Hey.